Dr. Eric Pierce on gene therapy. The three stages in developing treatments for patients. I see our work in the Ocular Genomics Institute at Mass Ioneer being, in a sense, a microcosm of the whole inherited retinal degeneration research field, which FFB supports. And we really think of our research as divided up into three steps or stages, all directed towards getting therapies to patients with these disorders. The first stage is understanding the genetic cause of disease. We have a big effort directed towards that goal, as does FFB. The next stage is really trying to understand how the misspellings and genes that we identify as genetic causes of disease really do cause disease. How do they damage the light-sensitive cells in the retina? How do they lead to blindness? Because I think you need to understand that to be effective in the third phase, which is to develop gene or genetic therapies for these disorders. And I think FFB has a role in really supporting all three of those steps in research and has been great in the past at supporting and continues to be great at supporting the laboratory-based translational research to identify the genetic causes of disease and understand how those mutations cause disease, and the proof-of-concept studies to develop new therapies for these disorders. That's where I think FFB can be the best and has been the best. I think what we sometimes forget is the challenge of understanding each disorder individually so we can really develop the appropriate gene or genetic therapy that's tailor-made for that specific therapy. And if I had to pick one, as you suggested, one major challenge in, in my field, that's it. It's really taking the time, making the effort to understand each disease thoroughly so we can really develop the best therapies for these disorders. In 1998 or 1999, we discovered the gene that harbors mutations that causes one fairly common form of dominant retinitis pigmentosa called RP1. For the past 12, 14 years, we've been studying how mutations in that gene cause disease. In just the past couple of years, we've finally, I think, understood or understand that process and recently published a paper describing how the mutations we originally found in 1999 really caused the retina to degenerate and vision to be lost. Armed with that knowledge, we're now working on gene therapy for RP1 disease. It's challenging because the gene is large. It doesn't fit into the standard delivery system that's used, the adeno-associated virus delivery vector. But we've got very talented people working with us in the Ocular Genomics Institute. I think we have a real opportunity to develop gene therapy for RP1 disease in a way that wasn't anticipated before, something that people didn't expect based on the kind of mutations that were originally identified. But I think we really can bring that through the proof of concept study in the lab and to patients, hopefully at Mass Ioneer and then around the U.S. and around the world.